Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record live at 2 p.m. Eastern Time every Monday. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you want to submit to be on the show, take a look at the information in the description. So I emailed you an interesting hand. I don't think I played it great and just wanted okay. your opinion. Okay, so, cool. And I actually emailed you with wrong effective stacks. I was looking back. I had about 1,100. I'm in the small blind. Okay. Um, under the gun raises to $12. He's got about 280. It, so what's oh, the size one, of the game one, and where are you playing at? It's 1-2 live, no limit. And it's at Harrah's in Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, I just uh, I just stayed there. Pretty good poker room. I and actually it was right after income tax, so yeah, I just stayed there. Uh, in when the hell did I go to Kansas City? Uh, sometime like in November. When did I go? So when I came down, I think it was like in October or something like that. It's a nice uh, hotel. Yeah. Nice so one, facility. so one, two, no limit. Harris KC, eleven hundred effective, and who raised to twelve? Un under the gun. Okay, under the gun raises he, to 12. He's got 286. Okay. Uh, folds around to me in a small blind. I have black sevens. Okay. Um, I just call. Yep. Um, big blind completes, and he has me covered. Okay, so you and the big blind are deep. I'm deep in for the game. Blind. Right, you and the big blind are deep. Right, like at eleven hundred. Yeah, very, very. The whole table's pretty deep. Actually, okay. the under the gun is the short stack. Right, and this is like it's a match about, the stack it's about game, right? In. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So pots thirty six. The flop is ten of spades, three of diamond, uh, two of spades. Ten of spades, three of diamonds, two of spades. Okay. And I check. All right. And everyone checks behind. So checks. No there. action on the flop. Okay. Turn is seven of hearts. So you turn a set. Turn a set. Yep. Great. Right. Okay. With no money in the pot. Yep. <laughs> so well, you're going to, I mean, 24. well, I mean, there's $36 in there, right? It's better than. The first call, right. I don't know if you caught that, where it was just basically limped around, you know? <laughs> I did. That, that, that hand is actually pretty similar to this one. Kind yeah, because it was 7-7. And... Seven, seven. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I bet ahead. $24. You bet 24 And they both called. All right. So, Hero bets 24 Call, call. So, again, this is a situation where... The big blind has naturally checked to the under the gun on the flop, right? And the under the gun is checked through. Now the turn is a seven and the big blind is basically has an unknown range. With you guys being this deep, I feel like I very well might try to go for a check race here against the big blind um, because if he bets off, we're trying to build some money. With that being said, I've seen people get more money in by betting and then having a hand call you that would otherwise either not bet on the turn or fold to a check race. So it's probably pretty close. I'm just looking for creative things to get money in the pot. You know what I'm saying? But wow, you bet 24 and they both call back. No. And it's totally rainbow board, right? 10 of spades, three of diamonds, deuce of spades. Well, front door spades. Basically. There's a spade draw, but no, right, right, yeah, right. no flush out there. So now the pot's like 108, right? Right. Okay, let's go to the river. Uh, three of spades. The river is the three of spades. Okay. So I'm I'm still I'm hoping for a raise here. I bet eighty five. So you bet eighty five here at the end. So hero bets eighty five. Okay, into one oh eight. Um, this is interesting. So the front door spades come in right at the end. Right. Well, I mean, here's I the thing. Seven like, full and the spades came in. Yeah. Right. You got sevens full and the spades come in. I wouldn't expect, 
I wouldn't really expect um, the preflop raiser to have a flush here when he doesn't bet off on the flop all that much. The big blind can have a flush here, you know, by calling the turn. I don't really want to get overly tricky with this one. I think betting is fine, and maybe you just go for a little bit larger sizing the way that you've played it. So you bet 25 on the, excuse me, 24 on the turn, call, call. Maybe I bet 100 here at the end. And the reason why I don't want to go for a check raise here is because I think there is a much wider range of hands that will call a bet than will bet and definitely call to a check raise. Like you could get the big blind to call you with 10x, but if you check the river, he's going to check. And then it just gets checked down. And then you feel like right. an asshole. Right. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't mind it. I just might I might try to bet a little bit larger at the end. Um, okay. So what ended up happening? So the big blind uh, raises to 250. Oh, OK. Big blind raises. So the big blind raises to 250. OK. Right. And then and, and I then... like you said, I have no range on him because I mean. He called 12 pre, checks the flop, calls my 24. So he, and then the under the gun snap calls, which is all in for him. He he had basically 250 left. Okay, let's replay this because this is really interesting now. So this is similar to that other call, actually. So 1100 effective with this guy in the big blind, heroes in the small blind. This guy off a 286 stack. This is a one, two in Kansas City. Guy with 286 from a from under the gun makes it 12. Gets folded Correct. around the hero. Hero calls with sevens in the small blind. The big blind calls. The pot is t the the flop is ten of spades, three of diamonds, deuce of spades. It gets checked through. The turn is the seven of hearts, giving you second set ten three deuce seven. Pot's 36. You bet 24. They both call. Okay, now the pot's 108. The river's the three of spades, so it brings in the front door spade draw, pairs the three. You bet 85, big blind raises to 250, under the gun calls all in, basically, right? So right. what I was going to say is is that if – let's let's say that the under the gun did not call all in, I think you have to play for stacks here against the big blind. I think I put in the third bet against the big blind. Because I think that the big blind could have like the nut flush here. Um, right. You know, it's not always that the guy is just going to call with a nut flush just because the board is paired and he might have any flush. It's not like you bet. It's not like you over bet. You bet 85. Um, and I think if I had the nut flush there and I was the big blind, I probably would raise. Although you might see me raise fold, but these guys are incapable of raise folding. But it's interesting because the under the gun calls all in. So trying to think Correct. about like, what does that guy have? Does he have the flush? And this other guy in the big blind actually has a stronger hand. Or does that guy, was he sandbagging like 10, 10? Although that's unlikely because you'd think he would jam the turn. I Boy, thought that it, it confused me because he's an older guy too. The big blind is about 70 years old. Mm -hmm. And the the under the guns about fifty five, so when the when the when he raises the two fifty, I'm thinking okay he might have like a nut spade, and then when the under the gun calls so quick, I'm like well shoot he might have the nut spades, and then what the heck does this guy have? Uh, so you said the the big blind is like fifty five, is that right? No, no, sorry, the big blind is like seventy. Oh, so wow. He's, he's an old guy. Uh, so kind of I mean, I really want to put in – I really want to put in the third bet here. I mean, I think if I was heads up, even if the guy was 70 years old, I might put in the third bet. But for the reasons I think you stated, when the end of the gun calls all in, something weird is going on where it's the end of the gun that has a flush and you beat him or you're going to lose the end of the gun somehow – and uh, it doesn't matter because now the pot's going to be shipped to him. That's less, far less likely than the fact that the end of the gun actually might have a flush. And then if the end of the gun has a flush, now you're looking at this and you're like, well, what is the... But the only thing you right. lose to is 10-10, right? 10-10 and 3-3. Three, three. You would think that 3-3... 10-10 three, and 3-3. Three, three, three. But don't those hands raise the turn some of the time, though? That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, how... So... 
I'm thinking if the big blind there has 10, 10, or 3, 3, or any set, when I bet the turn, there's going to be a raise, especially with a spade draw out there. Mm-hmm. But there was no raise. Mm-hmm. I just, I was just so confused. I think I got to tell you, I, I got to tell you, I think it's actually close. I think in the heat of the moment, I probably would just race. Um, and it's debatable. I think it's very, very close with that third player. Did you just call? I did call. Okay. And what were the hands? So uh, under the gun, the short stack had a nut flush. And he showed first and I'm like, oh shit, I'm done. And then, well, of course, um, you beat him, though, right? You beat him. I beat him, yes. Correct. By the way, well, by the way, had- also before you reveal here, caller, I think something else needs to be pointed out too. You beat some full houses here. Now I don't know how wide the guy is completing in the big blind, but what if he has like three do suited or some three. shit like that? Right. 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 And then he turned the uh, big blind, who I did not raise, turns over uh, pocket deuces. Oh, or pocket deuces. Yeah, there's another one. Deuce, deuce, too. Deuce is cool. So, I so there the you go. Did not get value. Now, like I, I, will, I will tell you that there is no way in hell that the big blind is ever raised folding. That's one of the things no. that uh, – so that's why I kind of feel like on the surface I'm like, mm, I just want to jam here anyways. I don't know why I didn't – pop out to me deuce deuce but yeah you beat deuce deuce here too i mean yeah you lose to 10 10 and you lose to 3 3 right that's four combos you beat deuce right. deuce i had third nut yeah yeah um and then if he ever has like a hand like 7 3 i mean there's i mean who knows how wide these guys are you know completing in the big blind but yeah that one feels course, a little bit dirty man, right the old man said that if i jammed for stacks he was going to fold but i don't believe it i don't believe it i don't believe that either <laughs> um I, I i don't i don't buy it um some people are saying could you just kind of min raise i don't really see the point in min raising because i think the jam's going to get called so i, well, I don't I know what min raise too though but the min raise like i'm concerned with three three and ten ten here so if i min raise and he shoves it doesn't it puts me at another decision you know which i might as well just well if i'm it's not it's not that you're min raise folding it's just that you're i mean i trying to get him you could go down some rabbit hole (laughs) really you're gonna you're gonna i'm not saying you call her but talking to people in the chat you're gonna three bet the river at one two three bet fold the river for value right eighty five to two fifty, and then click it back up to like four thirty five, and then shove for like and then fold for like five hundred more. That'd be pretty sophisticated. I don't know if that plays ever actually happened in the history of live poker. The three bet fold on the river at one two. I I will tell you I have check raise folded at five ten before on the river. Check raise folded for value at five ten. But to three right. bet fold is crazy. So if you throw that out, I just think that the the the, the hands that are going to call the min raise are going to call the shove. So you might as well shove, which is kind of consistent with what right. you were saying, right? But that's a fun hand. Yeah. Hey, man, I appreciate the call. Thank you very much. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.